All right, so, Randy, I mean, I'm just looking at the charts right now. Since your last earnings back in November, the stock's more than double. Give us a sense. What are you seeing when it comes to demand? What do you think is giving investors so much confidence in your company? Well, you know, Zometry has uh, grown this year over 18 percent. In the fourth quarter, we're uh, forecasting uh, growth, you know, that's accelerating. And we also got it to being adjusted EBITDA positive in 2024. So I think investors are excited about our story. Um, you know, Zometry is the leading marketplace uh, for custom manufacturing, and we use AI to provide pricing for, for both buyers and suppliers and connect, uh, connect tremendous demand for, with uh, thousands of small manufacturers spread out across the country and across the world. Um, I, I do want to talk to you about what your customers are telling you right now. Um, you do use AI as part of your cloud-based suite of services. What are they telling you about their demand and how they see AI fitting into it? Yeah, as you, as you mentioned earlier, Zometry has done extensive polling this year with Zogby and Forbes, and more than 70 percent of manufacturing CEOs have deployed uh, AI in some fashion in 2023. And we expect that trend to, if anything, accelerate in 2024. So clearly, AI is, is a key part of, of manufacturing moving forward. And as I mentioned, we use that. We've used that since our founding of the company uh, to provide pricing and matching, optimizing the match between buyers and suppliers. Uh, one other thing that uh, seems to be a tailwind for your business is nearshoring. I was actually just in Mexico myself a few weeks ago. Uh, sure. More and more U.S. companies trying to at least make uh, or place part of their production and sourcing uh, in Mexico to try to mitigate some supply chain disruptions. How is that impacting your business as we look ahead to 2024? Yeah, 75 percent of the C manufacturing CEOs we polled have done some sort of reshoring in uh, 2023. And again, we expect that trend to continue. It's fueled by the Buy America, Build America, the Chips and Science Acts, tax incentives. And again, if anything, we expect to see even more of that in 2024. So when you say even more of that, is it going to broaden out? And in, in from what you're hearing from customers and other people who may be interested, is it going to broaden out more? I mean, we're looking at some of your customers. It's pretty diversified already, BMW, Dell. Um, but do you expect the, the nearshoring trend to broaden out and your company to benefit from that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're a technology company. It's a very extensible platform and we're in multiple different verticals and industries. And we expect this trend to be across all of those and, and really to span from the largest companies in the world to, to even the SMB market more and more reassuring. You know, people are concerned. There's geopolitical concerns. There's climate related concerns. And there are, again, there are incentives here uh, by our federal government and different acts that are, are encouraging people to look here in the United States where we've got a tremendous manufacturing okay. base, as well as nearshoring as well. So, Randy, help me out with this one. We often talk about AI being a disruptor and also making businesses more efficient. Uh, according to the latest JOLTS report, there's a shortfall of about 587,000 manufacturing workers. How does AI close that gap? I mean, so many manufacturing jobs, you still do need a human touch. Give us a sense how AI can help close that gap for companies. Yeah, I mean, it surprises people, but manufacturing is actually a high-tech industry. And, and we like to call it the next Silicon Valley uh, is in manufacturing. So the, the people that are, are running these machines that are producing so many important goods need to know how to program uh, everything from 3D printing uh, to molding, casting. These are more and more using advanced technology. And you mentioned it, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics thinks we have almost 600,000 jobs that haven't been filled yet in the manufacturing sector. That is actually the number one concern of CEOs is the labor gap here in the U.S. And AI, particularly as more and more technology is, is important in manufacturing itself, can help fill that gap. But is it enough? Absolutely not. We need to train more manufacturing workers right here in the United States as quickly as possible.